Two of the big winners on last weekend's UFC 296 card didn't even compete on the event. Well, they kind of did, and that is Sean Strickland and Dracus Duplessis uh, getting into it. And even before the brawl in the crowd and all that, they had a really good press conference, one that a lot of people were talking about. In some ways, this actually overshadowed UFC 296 last week. And I think if you're the UFC, at the end of the day, I know there's some stuff that they probably didn't like. This is good for business. This is a fight that certainly people are more intrigued by now in a fight where going into it, there wasn't really any rivalry or controversy or anything like that. And now they've got a ton of it. And look at the UFC right here. I just noticed this today. They actually put the brawl between Strickland and Duplessis uh, on their main Twitter account, which if that doesn't tell you that they wanted something like this to happen, I don't know what does. Um, I know I did a video on the brawl itself, but I'll show you two quick uh, videos as well because the, the video I had in mind was the, the angle wasn't very good, but, but look at this right here. So it started with Duplessis. So Sort of being shown strictly. They're taunting each other here. Fires and then the uh, they're going back and forth. Let's see, dodges it. Oh, here, I'll let Anik do the commentary. Much, much better at commentating than I am. All right, so oh, he's still I'm being talking. told that Strickland asks Gilbert Burns' son to move. Yeah, so you can see it there. He's asking Burns' son to move, which, great move, Sean Strickland. Again, if there's any kids hurting this, this would have been really bad for the UFC. But uh, let's keep watching. Oh, and then, oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> out of nowhere, that's... Out of no. come on, Joe, out of nowhere? I mean, there was a lot of bad blood there. And this sort of started with the whole uh, press conference stuff. Uh, Drake is, you know, in my opinion, crossing the line, saying every childhood memory you have will come back, uh, talking about uh, Strickland's father and all that. And look, I know, uh, you know, Strickland said a lot of horrible stuff as well. I said this on my live stream. Look, if stuff is horribly said, we should call it out on both sides. You shouldn't say, well, he said this or he said this. That doesn't matter. In my opinion, they're, they're saying stuff that, that's definitely crossing the line. But if you're the UFC, you're looking at dollar signs here and you're going, man, this definitely picked things up a lot uh, because this was a fight, like I said, that going in uh, to this matchup, there wasn't really any heat. In fact, I'd argue that some of the Dracus fans are probably also Strickland fans as well. I think they all have a mutual dislike for Israel Adesanya. If you think of Strickland going in and winning the belt and Duplessis supposed to fight Adesanya and Adesanya's team and, you know, implying that Dracus was scared to fight him and all this different stuff. So I think, you know, a lot of the fans were happy to see this put together out of their mutual dislike for Israel Adesanya. Well, now you're seeing people pick sides. I've seen a lot of different people talk about both, but this is exactly what the UFC wants, especially with how disappointing UFC 296, the main event between Colby Covington and Leon Edwards was. The first pay-per-view of 2023 is in Toronto at UFC 297. And this fight on paper, I thought it was a great fight. I heard some people complaining, but this is now a big fight because you've got that built-in storyline where you've got two guys who clearly don't like each other. You have all this footage that you can use on the countdown show. Um, to me, this is a really good scenario here for the UFC, especially with what happened at UFC 296. And, um, you know, again, I saw this clip everywhere like this this clip of them going into it here's another angle by the way. Strickland just jumps in there I have to lower that a bit in case I get any copywritten stuff but you can see here Strickland uh jumping out of his seat and uh laying a few hammer fists there on Duplessis so uh again like this is the type of stuff that fans like you know I've said this before and this is why MMA is is always going to be a popular sport if you're on the corner of a street and you're seeing someone playing baseball or someone playing hockey or you're seeing two people get in a fight you're going to watch the fight it's primal it's within us this is the type of stuff that gets people intrigued by the fight in fact I would be willing to bet when people are messaging me about this fight being on they're gonna be like hey is that the fight that the two guys have gotten to a fight in the crowd like this is exactly what the UFC wants and you know they did this with McGregor as well with the Dolly thing right where you know I don't think they did too much of an effort to keep McGregor out of uh, throwing that well, I don't think he expected McGregor to throw the Dolly but they wanted something to happen between McGregor and Habib at the UFC Brooklyn card and they ended up using the footage in the countdown show they're going to do the exact same thing here with Strickland and Duplessis as well so um, that that's kind of you know where where I see this the other thing that we got to talk about and I've had some people ask me about this um, I, I'm not going to I don't have the video handy here but you guys saw the back and forth between these two at the press conference when Duplessis brought up Strickland Strickland's father, you could see it touched a nerve. You could see Strickland kind of get out of that relaxed state that he's normally in where he's kind of joking around and you could legitimately see him a bit pissed off here. And that's why he called him the F word, which I could, they can't say that on here. That's not politically correct. Uh, but you know which F word I'm talking about here. And, and it kind of set him off. And I saw some people saying to me like, oh, do you think this is going to throw Sean off in the fight? I don't think so. I mean, Sean Strickland, just on the optics of it, this is a guy who grew up in an abusive household. This is a guy that had to go down to Australia and fight Israel Adesanya on short notice with fans that were... Um, um, you know, you would think would be pro Israel Adesanya. So I think he can handle a lot of different pressure. I don't think this really set him off, but you never know. But that's, again, another wrinkle in this fight, which makes it interesting. And here's the other thing, too. Like, on paper, this 
this fight is very close. Like you look at what Duplessis did to Robert Whitaker in his last fight, finishing Whitaker, dominating him from bell to bell, an extremely impressive performance from Duplessis. And then on the flip side, you got Sean Strickland who figured out the puzzle, puzzle of Israel Adesanya and didn't have to knock him out to do it. He just dominated him the whole fight. So this is like a great way to kick off next year. And if you're the UFC, you got to be happy about how this is all that happened, especially with the fact there were no, there, there was no repercussions here. No kids got hurt. No one got hurt in the crowd. Um, there's no police involved. Like this was kind of, uh, you know, great scenario for the UFC. And let's be honest too. This also took attention away from the main event as well, which is what the UFC I'm sure wants, because I've heard plenty of people, just even people that, don't even watch MMA that much. Message me over the last couple of days and say, man, that main event was terrible. That's not what you want for business. You want this type of stuff where people are interested. And I think this fight is absolutely going to deliver. And let me say this as a Canadian. I'm happy to see this fight on here. You know, in Canada, we've kind of gotten shafted the last couple of years when it comes to main events. This is a fantastic main event. And knock on wood, everything goes according to plan and there's no issues here. But I'm very, very, very excited about this as well. I mean, I love this fight before. Like when they put this together, I was, I was really thrilled. You guys know I've done videos on this. I was the one that pushed for this fight. I did not want to see Hamzat Chimaev next. I did not. And I know Chimaev's injury is probably the reason this fight is actually happening, but I'm glad they, they listened to the fans and they, they put this together because this is just such a, a big, big, big fight for the division and a new sort of era starting with Strickland being the champion. And now you've got this challenger in Duplessis who's, you know, not lost in the UFC. He gets this opportunity to do it. So yeah, I just think that this every now and then you get stuff like this happening, right? The UFC dropped the ball with three piece in a soda with Masvidal and Leon Edwards going at it. They never ended up fighting, right? So, you know, that's something that, that went away. Um, you've had other situations. I feel like the UFC hasn't been able to capitalize. This is one they have. And you know that they put them next to each other for something like this to happen. And like I said, I've seen everybody talk about this over the last little bit, these two going at it. And I think that, look, as long as no one's getting hurt and things aren't getting too personal, I, I think it's good. You know, you need some interest. The UFC, and forget about the UFC, forget about MMA in general, even in boxing, it's hard to get fans interested. It really is. Like, I think there's very few draws these days. This is the type of stuff you need to do to garner interest. And as long as no one's getting hurt, I'm all for it. Now, as far as the comments with, you know, Duplessis, this, you know, I don't support this, right? But I also don't support some of the stuff that Sean Strickland says as well. I think you should leave family out of it. Personally, I kind of agree with Dana White there, but... Again, this has made this interesting because maybe this has touched a nerve with Strickland. Maybe this will throw him off in the fight. I don't think it will, but maybe it will. And that's what we're going to find out when these two eventually clash on January 20th in Toronto. So um, that's basically the point of what I wanted to do in this video is just saying that like, if you're the UFC right now, you got to be thrilled about all this. And this is stuff that people are still going to talk about going forward over the holidays. Not so much the Colby Covington stuff, I would hope, because this is something that, like I said, is the next pay-per-view. It's not even the first event. The first event is, what, Walker and Ankoliev, but this is the first pay-per-view. You know the UFC wants to start off strong as they look ahead to a big year, right? They got UFC 300. They got the event going on at the Sphere. Like, it's going to be a big year for the UFC. So to start it off with a big, strong main event like this that's got some heat, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens uh, as far as the fight and and, and the buildup and everything else. So uh, I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, do you like this type of stuff? Do you think it crosses the line? I know there's going to be people upset being like, this is bad for the sport or this type of trash talk is bad for the sport. Trust me, I, I don't like a lot of this trash talk stuff either, but you know, the brawl, as long as no one gets hurt, if they're getting into a scuffle, this is the type of stuff that people love and they eat it up and it definitely makes people more interested in the fight. So I'm all for it. Uh, follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Lynch on Sports. I'm James Lynch. If there's any other topics you want me to tackle, more than happy to do more videos like this when I get the opportunity to. Uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments. I'll talk to you guys soon.